It's going to be funny today. How could it be funny? Germans have no sense of humor. They don't? Everybody knows that. Let's take a closer look. Everybody knows that the British are famous for their black humor, for Monty Python or the Benny Hill Show. From Italy, people know Scherzi Aparte or the films with Bud Spencer and Terence Hill. From the USA, people laughed at the Naked Gun or the Ghostbusters, or about the Australian Crocodile Dundee. But Germany? Maybe it's the humor in general. Jokes are sometimes language-bound. An example. Why don't you feel hungry in the desert? Because of the sandwiches there. If you try to translate this in your local language, if it's not English, you may face a problem. Warum hast du in der Wüste keinen Hunger? Wegen des Sandes dort. Wegen der Butterbrote da. Jokes are sometimes only funny in the language and cannot be translated. Such a joke from a kid of mine. Was ist grün und sitzt auf der Toilette? Ein Kaktus. Jokes are also sometimes regionally bound. An example. What is the difference between an English pensioner, a French pensioner and a German pensioner? The English pensioner takes his bowler, his umbrella and goes to play bridge. The French pensioner takes his red wine and his fishing rod and sits by the Seine. And the German pensioner takes his heart drops and goes to work. That's only funny if you have the regional prejustice that Germans work all the time. If you don't know the culture behind, you don't understand the joke behind. Jokes are sometimes time-bound. Example. Erich Honecker goes to the window in the morning and looks up at the sky. Good morning, dear son. Good morning, dear Erich. How are you, dear son? I'm fine. How are you? Thank you. I'm fine, too. At noon, Honecker walks through the park and looks up at the sky. Good day, dear son. Good day, dear Erich. How are you, dear son? I'm fine. How are you? Thank you. I'm fine, too. In the evening, Honecker steps out onto the balcony, looks up at the sky and says, Good evening, dear son. Good evening, dear son. Leave me alone, I'm in the West. If you don't know who Erich Honecker was and what that has to do with the West, you won't get the joke. But there are also jokes where you can exchange the protagonists and thus make them valid again and again. Example. The former Chancellor of the Federal Republic of Germany, Helmut Kohl, and the former Chairman of the Council of State of the GDR met during a state visit. Kohl said, I have a hobby. I collect the jokes people make about me. I have a very similar hobby there, responded Honecker. I collect the people who make jokes about me. So, you need the appropriate knowledge to be able to understand jokes at all. Of course, this knowledge is more readily available in the region than in other parts of the world. Also, some jokes deliberately feature certain protagonists. In Germany, there were jokes about East Friesens, Bavarians or Blondes, all of whom were supposedly stupid. Little Fritz or Grandma Erna are often mentioned in children's jokes, or locally in Cologne they talk about Tunis and Schäl. But this kind of thing is common in many regions. Which inhabitants are joked about in your country? Let's take a look at some German history. The poet Gotthold Ephraim Lessing wrote many a humorous poem in the 18th century, like this one. Ein Hurenhaus geriet um Mitternacht in Brand. Schnell sprang zum Löschen oder Retten ein Dutzend Mönche von den Betten. Wo waren die? Sie waren bei der Hand. Ein Hurenhaus geriet in Brand. To translate this poem adequately, it would need better English skills than mine, so I write the literal translation once next to it. 
A good hundred years later it was Willem Busch, for example, who conjured up laughter in the faces of so many people. Perhaps his best known work is The Adventures of Maxim Moritz. At the same time, this is perhaps the first comic strip to use onomatopoeic language in addition to pictures and text. The translation seen here is also very successful. Max und Moritz gar nicht träge sägen heimlich mit der Säge Ritze, Ratze voller Tücke in die Brücke eine Lücke. Als nun diese Tat vorbei, hört man plötzlich ein Geschrei. Max und Moritz, nought could all them, took a saw when no one saw them. Ritze, Ratze, riddle, diddle, saw a gap across the middle. When this feat was finished well, suddenly was heard a yell. Another well-known humorist of his time was Werner Fink. In a time where more and more people were silent because the Nazis did not tolerate any contradiction, he unintentionally became a cabaret artist, again his will but with great success. At one of his performances, when he saw a Gestapo officer taking notes, he asked, Can you follow me, or do I have to follow you? In the Heimatfilme, Homeland movies, Heinz Rühmann, Theo Lingen or Heinz Erhard delighted and also made various appearances on stage or even wrote books. Well-known stages for funny plays are or were also, for example, the Ohnesorg Theater, the Milovic Theater or Peter Steiner's Theaterstadel. These are or were local stages in Hamburg, Cologne or Bavaria, which in turn played strongly with the local dialects and could not even be understood by every German. At this point we come to an important difference in German humor. On the one hand we have comedians who only make people laugh. There are or were people like Phipps Asmussen, Jürgen von der Lippe, Mario Barth, Anke Engelke and countless others. Some of them, like Dieter Hallervorden, started out in the 70s and 80s as a clown and over time became character actor and have since given other comedians, cabaret artists and small-time performers a stage. In addition, there were and still are cabaret artists who deliberately deal with political issues and package facts in a humorous way in order to bring them closer to the people. Some of them are or were Dieter Hillebrand, Bruno Jonas, Volker Pispers, Caroline Chemikus or Klaus von Wagner, who co-host the satirical program Die Anstalt. The famous Otto Warkes, who dubbed Sid in the German translation of Ice Age, did such a good job that all dubbing actors had to imitate his style because it was so well received. But why are these people so unknown outside the German-speaking world? Imagine you are doing a job very well, where you have to talk a lot, maybe radio presenter, actor or teacher, let's say a history teacher, and you know everything about your country and the whole continent. Can you do that just as well in another language? Do you then also know everything about the other country and the other continent? If not, why should you leave the country and try it in another language? But there are a few who have. Here are a few videos by Michael Mittermeier, Vincent Ebert or Kaya Jana in English. Or if you want to watch some satirical programs, here are a few shows and programs with good English subtitles. Or see what others have to say about Volker Pispers programs. Decide yourself whether German have a sense of humor. Finally, a Fritzchen joke. Mrs. Müller, the teacher of the first grade class, had problems with one of her pupils. She asked him, Fritzchen, what's your problem? He said, I'm too smart for the first grade. My sister is in the third grade and I'm smarter than her. I want to go to the third grade too. Frau Müller listened 
to the whole thing a few times, but one day she had enough and went with the boy to the headmaster. While Fritzim waited outside, she explained the situation to the headmaster. He told her that he wanted to test the boy. If he answered only one of the questions he would ask him wrong, he would stay in the first class. So Fritzim was brought in and then the test began. Headmaster, what results in three times three? Nine. What is the capital of Germany? Berlin. It went on like this for a while and the boy answered all questions correctly. Finally, the headmaster said to the teacher, he's right, we should send him to the third grade. Mrs. Muller looked at him and said, please, let me ask a few questions too. Everyone agreed, so, so she began. Fritzchen, what does a cow have for, but I have only two? Fritzchen thought very briefly and then answered, legs. Mrs. Muller, what do you have in your trousers, but I don't? The director was confused. Why was she asking such questions? Fritzchen, pockets. Mrs. Muller, good. And what comes in pink and hard and comes out soft and sticky? The stunt director's mouth was open, but before he could intervene, the answer came, Fritzchen, a chewing gum. Mrs. Muller continued. What is a man doing standing up, the woman sitting down and the dog on three legs? Fritzchen, shaking hands. The director shook all over. Mrs. Muller, which word starts with an F, ends with a K and stands for hot action? <gasps> Fritzchen, fire truck. The headmaster breathed a sigh of relief and said, S send him straight to fourth grade. I got the last five questions wrong. Thank you for watching and have fun.